morning everyone. How are you today? I hope you're well. I'm back in the garden. Ha! Ah, finally! Haven't been here for a week. Um, look, it's been so dry and a bit windy, so the ground is like rock. I've been slightly putting off the next few days' jobs in the hope of getting rain to help me by softening the ground a bit, but it's, it's not happened, so I've just got to bite the bullet and get on with it today. Um, the, what was I going to say, I'm going to start with the potato trenches. <laughs> I've just been putting it off, haven't I? Um, and I think it's actually become a bit of a block <laughs> to me, because every time I've thought about coming down here I thought oh I've got to do the potato trenches can't face it today so I haven't come to the garden at all which is daft I'm sure many of you will have experienced that you know that one job that needs doing but you just can't face doing it so you don't do anything at all so whatever it takes today that's my job that I'm doing uh, it's really, really windy today. Can't do anything about that. It is gonna muck around with the sound, no end. But it's windy because we've got a new weather front coming in from the Atlantic, sort of it's coming from southeast. And hopefully it's bringing some rain with it. I looked at the satellite images last night and the prediction for where this rain's going to come to it's supposed to start today and go on for 24 hours but when I looked at the satellite pictures it's just all oh, the other way around it's just if this is the UK <laughs> here's Cornwall here's London it's coming like this and it's just skirting like that <sighs> whether we'll get the rain or not I don't know doesn't matter jobs have got to be done anyway so I'm just going to talk quickly about what I'm going to do whilst I'm in here still because, like I say, it's really, really blowy out there and I'm worried that we won't be able to hear a thing. So, over the last couple of years, 18 months or so, I've tried to go, not no dig, but less dig. So I'll just explain one more time because it came up in yesterday's or day before's video. <clears throat> I'm not no dig because where I am... Um, I simply can't get any material, whether it's compost, stable manure, anything, I, I can't get any of that for free. Not only does that stuff cost, but there's also delivery costs involved too. <clears throat> and my allotment doesn't have an address, so for deliveries I have to get things delivered to my home address, which then means I have to transport everything from home to the garden. You imagine the amount of compost if I wanted to have a, a four inch thick layer on all my beds. <clears throat> I did work out the cubic meterage of what I would need. It's just ridiculous, I can't do it. Cost, bringing it here, all that sort of thing. Um, on the, a word on my compost and composting. Of course, I compost everything, <laughs> literally everything I compost paper from home, I compost cardboard, I gather leaves every autumn, like I use those on the beds, I put some in the compost bin, I shred them down, I use them as mulch, grass clippings, I do community mowing on site at least once a month, all those grass clippings I use whenever I trim the edges of my beds, all those little, <laughs> every little blade of grass gets picked up and put in the compost, <coughs> excuse me, of course, dead, dying foliage, that goes into my compost. Annual weeds, they go into the compost, not the perennial weeds. Um, so yeah, I literally compost everything I can lay my hands on right throughout the year. And over the course of a year, I pretty much fill up my two bins. But as it composts down, that ends up being about half a bin each. So in other words, one compost bin. That isn't even enough compost to do one bed, no dig. Obviously it's useful, <laughs> I use it, but uh, yeah, I compost everything. 
um, a few people have said to me about why don't I save my kitchen scraps to compost well of course I do <laughs> I do but the fact is I don't make a lot of kitchen scraps because I tend to eat the skins of most of my veg so potatoes carrots parsnips all of those things I don't peel them so I, I don't have any scraps from them the onions yes there's a bit of scrap that goes into the compost what else you know if I peel a squash to cook it those scraps come here but quite often if I roast a squash I eat the skin as well so yeah there's very little kitchen scraps folk have suggested that I ask my friends for their kitchen scraps to add fact is the vast majority of my friends garden so they're keeping their own kitchen scraps so yes look I compost everything I can <sighs> beg borrow steel no not quite steel stuff to put into my compost bins but despite that at the end of a year of composting I just don't produce enough and like I say to get enough to cover my garden with to go completely no dig would cost more than my crops are worth it's just not viable however coming back to these beds I'm going to prep I am trying to be less dig so once a bed becomes empty and fallow and a lot of my beds are in constant use so that simply doesn't happen but what I try to do all through the year is <coughs> excuse me I'm, I'm continually mulching any bare soil so between rows of beans underneath my tomatoes whatever it is and again I'll use pretty much anything strummed up leaves grass clippings cardboard anything so all through the year I'm, I'm mulching and of course that mulch gradually gets taken down by the worms. I have fantastic worm activity in my garden. Uh, and then when a bed does become fallow, so a few of the beds become fallow over winter, as I empty the beds of whatever veg was in it, I used to, in the autumn, dig that bed over and so put my green manure in and then dig that again in the spring no more so when I take the plants out in in the autumn I I don't dig the bed anymore I literally just put on top of it any compostable stuff I could find so quite often that's the crop that's just come out I'll chop that up and then lay that on the surface of the soil then get it covered with cardboard the cardboard's doing two things really it's um the worms love it <laughs> they'll come and have a chew but also it just protects the soil from the pelting rain we get over winter so that a couple of things one my nutrients don't get washed out and two my soil doesn't get that compaction that it gets from the rain when it's left bare so I did it on a smaller scale the previous winter it worked really well this winter I've done it again however <laughs> like everything in the garden this year I was a bit late doing it on some beds uh, for numerous reasons that I don't need to reiterate so today the plan is to do the spud beds if my knees hold up and I've got energy I've then got four more beds to prepare two for onions white red two for root veg carrots and parsnips I don't think I'll get onto those four beds today um, so with the spud bed <coughs> excuse me I've got a right little tickle today I've just been at the post office and the queue wasn't too bad today hallelujah um, and I had this tickle <clears throat> it's something about as soon as I'm out in public I want to cough <laughs> you can't cough it's like you do a little teeny tiny <laughs> into your hand or your hanky and everyone in the queue is like <laughs> cough her, go away anyway yes so the spud bed at the moment it's covered with cardboard that's weighted down and then underneath I think there's a mixture of leaves and some I think there might have been some brassica leaves at the end of last year so I'm going to uncover take the cardboard off pop it onto another bed for now I won't get rid of it yet 
any of the material that's under the cardboard and on top of the soil that hasn't composted. I'm going to just rake that off, pop it in one of my ton bags. I've got a plan for it. And then get on with making these spud trenches and hopefully, hopefully there's enough moisture in the soil from winter to make it doable and hopefully it won't have become too compact and clumpy over the winter. The only way to tell is to get out there and get doing it. So please excuse the wind and just live with it. It's a it's a beautiful fresh day, it's gorgeous and I don't mind the wind because I know it's the sort of, it's preceding this new weather front that's coming in. It's hopefully going to bring us some rain. So come on, let's get out there with a spade. Right then, first things first, let's get this lot cleared. A mixture of excitement and dread about what's underneath. <laughs> Yeah. Like I say, I will I'm save all this cardboard and either shred it for the compost bin or use it as mulch. Whatever, it won't be wasted. soil it looks dark and moist so fingers crossed it will be trenchable at least at least away from these trenches Oppa. right let's rake a bit off and see My thinking with all of this matter that's still on the top, I'll bring you in close to have a look. Um, <laughs> rake the top lot off that's not decomposed. Oh my god, it's so windy! Oh, it's so the wrong day for this. Um, rake this off, get it bagged up. Put the bag over there somewhere open to the rain and then all of this I'm going to stream down again and I'll use it as mulch over there on the broad beans and then in a few days when I've planted the onion sets um, I can use it to mulch them too. <laughs> it's going flying. Oh, those two pairs of hands then. Right, let me, I'm going to point you down here so you can see how the soil looks as I take off this material. So, as I mentioned in the shed, this bed got covered really late and uh, the day I did it, I'm remembering now, I had no strimmer battery, so I didn't, I wasn't able to strim these leaves down. And they were really quite dry. So, it's, it's no surprise that they haven't 
decomposed mark. But you can see, hopefully you can see here where some of them have. Let me see if I can show you by giving you a handful to look at like that. Can you see in there? Some of those leaves have begun to break down. Great. So as I'm making these trenches, that'll just get turned into the soil a little bit. Fab. Um, and then, like I said, hopefully we get this rain today. So all these leaves and bits of cardboard that I'm raking off now, hopefully we'll get a really good soaking. And then I can strim them. And it's a bag of mulch, ready-made mulch for the rest of the garden. Okay, it's going to take me a while. Let me crack on with this and then I'll bring you back when I'm ready to start trenching. wondering why I don't just make my trenches turn these leaves in um, while they're still so undecomposed if I leave them if I turn them into the soil to decompose they're going to lock up a load of nitrogen which I don't want um, and besides it's going to make fantastic mulch as I get my first few beds planted. Raking's going to stop for a moment. George has appeared. Yuck! This is rather as I feared it would be. So I didn't dig this bed at the end of last autumn, and I mean, it's just solid lumps boulders. Now the thing is, if I try and do my trench here, piling up my soil here, and it's piled up like this, like this lump, imagine a potter with a lump of clay firing it, it turns solid. With all the sun and warmth we're having, if I leave that like that, it's absolutely unworkable. I won't be able to drag it back down onto the plants to earth them up. I'll come onto that when I actually come to planting the potatoes. I'm going to talk all about why we do this, or at least why I do it. Anyway, the point is that that is no use to me. Um, that's a problem. Just come on a sec, let me get rid of the spade. That is a big problem waiting to happen further down the line so instead what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to fork it over just try and break it up a little bit um, then once it is a bit looser and more friable I can come back with the spade and lift it out to make trenches but yeah I mean this this can you see that? That is very typical for me, my soil. It's, it's clay, it sticks together. This as well, I should say, had, before anyone has a go at me, this had a ton, an absolute ton of organic matter added last year, tons of it. Look, 
it is what it is. Um, I've always said that, you know, this soil is highly nutritious, which it is highly nutrient dense. And the bottom line with my garden is, one of the things I'm trying to share and to show everyone else is, it is possible. Oh, let me sit a second and find you. Ah, there you are. It is possible to grow the vast majority of your own veg, your own food, for almost no money. A couple of quid a week throughout the year that I save up for seeds, compost, what have you. But, yeah, uh, I'm showing you this soil, not out of complaining, <laughs> not at all. This is my soil, it's what I've got to work with. But to sort of share with you that if you've got a soil like this, yeah, you're going to despair a bit. <laughs> I'm a bit despairing. But don't give up. If you don't have money to stick a deep layer of compost on the top of it, or you don't have access to things like that, you can still get really great crops out of your ground. It just means it's a little bit more work. So, there's a lot more work to do. I've got two beds to get done, minimum, today. So I'm gonna shut up and get on with it. And then, hopefully bring you back in a couple of hours when I've got my trenches done. Wish me luck. Courage your loins, girl. <laughs> it's doable. Well, I was just on my way back to the shed for a little breather, break, sit down, and look what caught my eye. Beautiful little dandelions. I'll leave those while they're in flower for the bees, and then start to go to seed, I'll have them. And then also, oh, oh, I'm stumbling, my knees are hurting. Look at these flower spikes that are coming. Oh, can't wait. Oh, the sweet Cecily's in flower already. And down at the front of the herb bed this new arrival oh so pretty i can't remember the name of this one sorry off the top of my head isn't that gorgeous the little the other little ones behind i'll show you this one that's the i'm trying to remember tulip tarda des das is femen does this femen they're over so it's lovely to have these to follow on. Gorgiosities. And I've also just noticed, uh, look at this soil everywhere. Oh my goodness, look at it all in there. Now, I don't know whether that's been a fox or a cat, but they've been in my hoogle culture. Oh, that's so annoying. What I'll do is, obviously, I'm gonna try and rescue as much of that as I can put it back in the pot and put a bit of metal mesh over the top of it. Grr. Oh, and I must water the sweet peas. I haven't been around for a few days to water. They're desperate. Right, time for a little sit down and a rest in the shed. Oh, because it's hard work today. But it's a gorgeous day for a bit of hard work. Oh, the herb bed is really coming back to life. Look at these hyssop. So I'm distracted now. Look at the hyssop, how much it's greened up again after that really brutal trimming I gave it. And then look at this. Look at all these flowers on the blueberries. So I've been advised that the birds love the fruit. So what I'll do is as they start to become little fruits, I'm going to get some of that tool out of the shed to cover them with because much as I love the wildlife, I don't want to share these beauties with the wildlife. No siree. Oh, no pretty. I was I had no idea what to expect in by way of the flowers, but they're so pretty. Gorgeous. Oh, that's better. A little bit of a sit down and a big gulp of water. Um, it's the perfect, perfect day for bed prep today because it's quite cool. It's a really fresh breeze, which is a rubbish for filming, of course. But that breeze keeps me nice and cool. It's brilliant. Look, there's no two ways about it. Um, oh, and I thought I'd just chat about this a bit. It's hard work today. It's really hard work. And I know, I know, I know, there's probably a ton of you screaming at the screen at me right now, but 
change the way I do things but I just want to I'm sort of anticipating and heading off some comments and questions I'm going to get about this uh, because I always do get them I've already explained why I'm not no dig it's the cost of it because I can't get any of that stuff for free and despite composting everything in sight I don't make enough compost so there we go that's why I'm not no dig can't afford it don't have access to the stuff and even if I was to win the lottery tomorrow and win a thousand pounds I would not spend it on compost to go no dig because there's other stuff there's repairs in my flat you know there's there's clothing there's shoes I need new shoes all these things I've done without for three years um, and that's okay but yeah if I suddenly have money I'm not going to be spending it on turning the garden into no dig I've got more important things to do with it and like I said there will be a lot of people in a similar position to me who can't afford it and in fact on my site all of us dig which tells you something about a the soil we have and b the cost so in terms of soil improvement um, people are suggesting I get coffee grounds and I'm always replying that there are no coffee shops in my neighborhood which I'm glad of my high street is a lovely little high street full of independent shops and useful things, not boring coffee shops, useful things like bookshops, ironmongers, chemists, um, all sorts of things like that. So yeah, no access to coffee grounds. And you can kind of basically take it as a given that if I'm not doing something in my garden that you think I ought to be doing, there's a reason I'm not doing it. And usually it will be because I don't have access to that thing or I don't have the money for that thing. But like I also always say, don't judge me by my techniques, judge me by my produce, because I do all right for produce. So yes, undoubtedly, it's a bit of hard work. It's a lot of hard work, working with such heavy clay, but it's a beautifully nutrient dense soil. So that's great. And that's one of the reasons I get such lovely crops. Excuse me, I need water. I'm gagging for water. Now the other thing people may suggest is um, neighbours of mine have tried straw bale gardening, putting their potatoes in that, it's a total fail. <laughs> but again, I would have to buy straw bales, not going to do that. Um, now a few years ago I did try something different with my spuds. And I think I'm going to try something ever so slightly different today as well. So a few years ago I broke both my wrists. I know, imagine it, two plaster casts. How do you pick your nose and how do you scratch your bum when you've got two plaster cars on, casts on? The answer is, you don't, you have to get someone else to do it. Anyway, it was over the winter, so by this time of the year, spud planting time, I was out of the casts, but I was into splints. It took ages, because not only had I broken bones, but I'd really damaged the, I'd, damaged my tendons really badly so I was able to use my hands to a degree but they were weak and it was painful and there was no way I was going to be able to dig you know you think of the action with the handle there was no way I was up to that so I went for individual holes for each potato the reason I'm mentioning this is because I'm sure some of you are thinking why don't I do that that year that I tried it, my crop almost entirely failed. It was the worst <laughs> harvest ever, absolutely useless. And I think one of the reasons is that as I was making the holes, I was using a bulb planter, my soil is so heavy and so dense and so sticky and compact, I don't think it ever truly comes across on camera. So please, that's the other thing. Trust me that I know my soil better than anyone and I know the work it needs to get it into a state where I can plant and sow things. Anyway, so yeah, using that bulb planter, I think what happened is as it sort of cut down through the soil, it sort of compacted the sides of that hole I made. So plopped the potato in, loosely covered it and then tried over the course of the season to sort of scratch earth from around the sides up and over that was quite difficult because all the soil around that hadn't been dug had pretty much set hard so there's nothing to earth them up with 
and I think because that sort of tube, if you like, into the soil was was compact, as the spuds were growing, they they just couldn't move sideways, so they were kind of chucking themselves out the top. So um, yeah, I did get a harvest, but virtually the lot were green. They you know they they'd had too much sunlight, so. Obviously, when they're green, they become toxic. So, yeah, it was a total waste that year. I don't regret trying it because at that stage, there was nothing else I could do because of my wrist situation. And having tried it and seen it doesn't work on my soil, great, I can pass that info on to other folk with soil like mine. Now, I think if you had a much looser, more loamy soil, that might work. You know what, why don't you give it a go? Um, if you don't want to experiment with your whole crop, maybe just try one or two this year. It may work, just because your soil is looser. On mine it doesn't. So I think what I'm going to try this year, instead of digging out the trenches as I normally would, what I've done with that bed now is I've forked the whole lot over to just loosen that soil up again. And as I've been forking, I've been kind of forking most of the soil into the middle so it's almost forming that little ridge of soil which I'll use later in the season to pull back down over the sunken potatoes as they're growing. I'm going to explain this all properly when I come to planting for those of you who are newbies. So what I thought is because I've already forked it and it's sort of beginning to be a pile in the middle for the rest of it rather than getting the spade in there um, I'm just going to use the rake and sort of drag more up out of the bottoms and up into that ridge. It might work, it might not, but I think it'll be a bit less work than getting the spade out now and lifting heavy spades full, because the ground is quite wet and quite heavy, so yeah. I'm going to give that a go, <sighs> but first of all, I'm going to have a little sit for two minutes and I've just seen Rusty turning up, so I think I'm going to have a sit and a cuddle. Hey buddy. Oh, Rusty, come and say hello. Come and say hello to everyone. Is he being shy for a minute? Come on. Come on. Hmm. <laughs> they don't want to see your bum. It's not even just your bum they're seeing, it's your, all your manhood. Hey, say hello to everyone. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Did you see my lips move? There's a food bowl on the floor, it's got nothing in it, but that's what he's pacing around. Right, yes, cuddle time, um, water, then let's get back outside. Right then, let's see if this will help. So you can probably see how, what I mean about, it's slightly more, as I've been taking it up, it's a bit piled up in the middle. So... I'm thinking, <coughs> still might be a bit of an effort, is this going to work, who knows, worth a try. And what I'll do is, today in anticipation of the rain, when I've made a bit more space for the spuds, I'll sprinkle the bottom with a load of the chicken pea pellets, so they can start to melt in the rain. And then I'm thinking, because I don't want to bother making a whole trench, but because I've now forked it up, I could actually fork an individual hole for each spud, rather than dig that whole trench out. Yeah, maybe. Why not? Uh. <laughs> puff, puff. I always say at this time of year, who needs a gym membership? I seem to have got more at one end of the bed than the other. And then likewise, all the other side. And of course, it's going to all trickle down. Do you know what, actually, because loosened it quite a lot 
I've given myself quite a nice big ridge here for using for earthing up as the season goes on. I think I'm going to call that sort of done. And then, like I say, when I come to do one of my spars, probably not with the fork, but uh, you're going to be able to see, like I say, here. Um, just literally, you know, fork a, a pile out of the way, then I can get my spud nice and deep. So it'll be deep to start with, and then I'll have all of this during the rest of the season to use for earthing. Great. Bindweed roots. Okay, so let's spread some chicken poo. Yay for a grotty job done. Whoa. Um, I'm not planting today. It's getting darker and darker by the minute, which I think means the rain is coming. My knees are done in. I've got other stuff to get on with at home, but brilliant, great start. I feel now like, yeah, starting the year. Like when I did the broad beans and the peas the other day, it just feels, oh, it feels great. It feels wonderful. And you know what? It is. So, um, whew. look, I'm sorry if uh, earlier on, if I sound like snarky and snippy about <laughs> things, it's just, <coughs> honestly, I get, I get asked so often, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? And, you know, I'm always grateful for suggestions and sometimes I think, oh, yeah, that's great and that's something I can do. Uh, but yeah, so, I'm not being snarky and snippy, I'm just trying to explain things so I don't have to do really long answers in comments all the time. I'm chuffed. I'm chuffed. That's a job I've been kind of dreading <laughs> because we've been so dry. Uh, but it's done. Yay! And the fun bit comes next is when I plant it. I will take you through that. I'll be doing other things that day so it'll just be a really short um, segment but um, I'll take you through it just aiming again for all the newbies this year. How are you all getting on by the way? Uh, I hear from quite a lot of you and I know that most of you have now sectioned off parts of your garden. Some of you have got to the stage where you've taken the turf off and you've stacked it up grass to grass side, mud to mud side. You've stacked it in the corner to let it rot down. Brilliant. So you've got your beds ready, yay! Or you're in the process of, brilliant. Uh, and I know that there's a lot of excitement out there amongst you, which is so wonderful. And you know, hopefully you'll discover how wonderful it is this year and you'll keep it going forever and ever and ever. Amen. I do hope so. Right, I've got a few little dinkery jobs to do, so I'm gonna get on with those. I'm going to say cheerio to you all for now. Oh my goodness, some of you have still got snow. Oh my goodness, I hope it's gone by now. For those of you without snow, I hope you're getting to enjoy some quality time with your dirt. Whatever you're all up to, please stay safe, stay well, stay happy and stay excited about your garden. Bye for now.